Sadly, two lives are destroyed yesterday during that deadly altercation between a driver and a squeegee worker. And tonight, the pain and frustration over the issues linger, of course. WMAR 2 News' Dave Detling continues our coverage of the story. Dave, what is the latest? Hey there, Jamie and Kelly. Well, behind me, you can see a police cruiser. They are stationed at areas all across the city where you would normally see squeegee workers. Again, that shooting death under investigation. Police still looking for the shooter. But earlier today, we saw about 100 bishops from the Episcopalian Church. They gathered across from the scene in a prayer circle to pray, and they called for an end to city violence. Friday, there wasn't a squeegee worker inside at Conway and Light, but there was added police presence following yesterday's altercation that ended with the death of 48-year-old Timothy Reynolds. We're combing through a lot of evidence right now in search of the person who shot the victim. The father of three was shot after an altercation with squeegee workers. Police say Reynolds grabbed a bat, swung at the group. That's when someone shot him. <laughs> As police investigate, people are praying, including Bishops United Against Gun Violence. Violence, no more! Hatred, no, no more! Bigotry, no more! The large group in town for a religious convention. They decided to take their message outside, condemning Baltimore's violence, including yesterday's tragedy. We need justice, not only for the man who was violently killed, but we need justice for those young men. So love is the answer and justice is the answer. Good education, good school system is the answer. Good housing is the answer. Good jobs is the answer. It's a similar message repeated by Mayor Brandon Scott earlier in the day. He addressed squeegee workers directly, asking them to get off the streets. I want you to take advantage of every resource that we are offering you to get off of those corners. Baltimore, its drivers, and even visitors knowing eliminating the squeegee worker culture won't be easy, but they say it's necessary. As much as we are thinking we're moving forward, we're taking five steps back each time we're moving forward. So us coming out today is a great way to bring everyone together again, but it's still a lot of work that we have to do as a society. And as for Timothy Reynolds' family, they are asking for privacy at this time. Again, his case still under investigation. If you have any information, call Metro Crime Stoppers at 1-8667-LOCKUP. Reporting near the Inner Harbor, Dave Detling, WMAR 2 News. All right, Dave, thanks. And as we continue to learn more details about this, uh, we wanted to look at some of the self-defense laws in our state. Uh, this story is part of our In Focus series, our commitment to you to dig a little deeper than the headline that you read. According to the Giffords Law Center, a gun control advocacy group, our state does not have a stand your ground law. Now, based on cases that have been argued in state courts, a person actually has a, quote, duty to retreat when in a public place. This is made more clear in the wording of the opinion in Birch versus State that was decided back in 1997, quote, one of the elements of the defense of self-defense is the duty of the defendant to retreat or avoid danger if such means were within his power and consistent with his safety. You know, in light of